Adding audio into our processing projects requires us to do uh, something first. What we have to do is we have to go under the tool pull down menu and choose add tool. Now once you do that, the what we are going to be adding into it is under our libraries. If I type in sound, I'm looking for the sound the processing sound library. Now I currently have mine installed, thus I see the green check next to it. If you don't have yours installed, you will click under sound and then you'll click on the inst install button. It will take a few moments and then it will install the sound library. So processing is then able to deal with sound in your project. So with the sound library installed and active, once I see the green mark, I'm good to go. Now in the main sketch, what we need to do is we need to then bring in the sound so that we can work with it. So currently we have our maze, we have our other variables that we're working with. And now what I'm going to do at before setup, so in this spot, so after enemy current enemy, now what I'm going to do is I have to import the processing sound library and I'm going to import all parts of it. So I say import processing dot sound dot star then semicolon to of course end the line. So the star signifies that's a wild card selector so that says just grab everything that's in the processing sound library. If I knew I only needed a specific part of it, I could be more specific if I read the documentation on the processing sound library and I could go grab just that part. But it's just easier right now to grab all of it. Now we need to make some variables to hold our sound information. So I will use sound file as my variable. I'll make one for my music and then I need one for my sound effect punch. I'll need one for my sound effect kick. And feel free to copy paste as you're doing this. My stare and my walk. So these are all the sounds that we're currently working with. We have our background music, we'll have our punch, our kick, our stare, and our walk that we are going to deploy into our project. Eventually we can add in additional sounds if we want. We can add walking sounds for the enemy creatures as well. We can set up a separate one for each type of enemy. That's all good and fine. So we'll look at that in a little bit. But right now we'll start with this to learn the basics of dealing with sound inside of processing. Oh, I will add my sound information at the end of setup. So there we have the font information. I'll just make a comment to designate this as sounds. And then I will designate my sound effects. And then I will have music as well. So with my sound effects, what we do is we do the name of the file we're working with. So I'll choose sound effect punch. It's going to be equal to a new capital S sound capital F file and then we use the word this and in quotation marks we are going to reference the path to the file. Because the file is in a folder called data, processing will always look into the data folder first and it's going to be able to find it. Now, if I were to put my sounds into subfolders inside the data folder, then I would have to specify that path or that folder that it's contained in. If I didn't use the data folder, if I just made a folder and called it sounds, then I would have to, instead of just saying the file name, I would say sounds, like that. If it makes you happier to list the folder that it's in and you say data slash and then the file name, that is perfectly fine as well. Now working in the processing environment, it sometimes the processing sound library prefers WAVE over MP3 files for decoding the information to be able to play it back. 
So it's happier in this case to use a WAV file. When we translate our project into P5.js and play it through a web browser, then it's going to be happier as an MP3 file. So we will want to have both at our disposal. That will make things better. We can play an MP3 file, but it's happier with a WAV file in this case. So now that I have my first one, this is enough text that repeats. I'm just going to copy paste it for my different sounds. So we have sound effect punch, kick, sound effect stare, and sound effect walk. And then I will correct those file names to match. And I can see what my file names are when I look at my folder structure. So I have that off on the right over here so I can verify that is indeed the files that I am working with. Now the music is going to be a new sound file, capital S sound, capital F file. Use the word this. This is then representing the context in which we want the sound to play. So this the use of this in this instance is going to then reference this program is where the sound is playing so that has ownership of that particular file. And my music is bitquest.mp3 so I'm going to reference that there as well. And what we can do to tell our sound to start playing is if I use the command music.loop, that now says our music is playing. Now we only have one music file that we're working with here, so we don't have to create an audio engine where we stop one, start a different one, or something like that it is possible that you could build that in so as you go between say your game state and your win and lose you change the kind of music that is playing you certainly could do that it would just require you to then find out what sound is playing tell it to stop and then tell your new sound to start so with the main music sound working it's time to switch gears and introduce or incorporate our different combat sounds we'll follow that up with the walking sound so going into the combat code here we will see where it was printing out messages to us we don't really care about those at the moment what we do care about is playing a sound and this is where we can with the uh, rock was our punch because it was punch kick stare leaving it as the rock paper scissors to make sense out of it so this will be my sound effect punch sound I will tell that to play and then for paper, it's going to be our, as I start to type paper, sound effect kick, we'll tell that to play. And finally, scissors with stare, so then that is our sound effect stare. We tell that to play as well. So that now tells our different sounds to play when the project happens. Oh. What I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, modify this a little one thing just so we can verify all the sounds are working. And inside this thing where it now allows me to, where it resets fighting back to false, hides the little fight um, result message, I'm going to just comment out this game state as play because by doing that, that's going to allow me to just be stuck in the little combat window once I get to it and then I can just make sure all my sounds are working without having to keep resetting the game. So now if I hit play after our seven second delay to decode the mp3 goes comes up, now I can punch it All three sounds are working and we're good to go there. So 
We've now added the sounds into the combat. Next is set it up so that when the sprite is walking around on screen, I want to be able to have it play the walking sound. And this is where it requires a little bit of thinking about how to implement that process. So inside the sprite, what we want is when the sprite is walking, I want it to play sound, but if I'm not walking, I want the sound to pause. And what we need to also figure out with that is we have to set it up so that the sprite is also going, to, that sound is going to loop and not just play one time. We don't want the sound just to play, we want the sound to continue to loop. To keep track of how can we implement the library, one thing we can do is we can look under libraries and I will see here are the libraries that processing has access to. I can go under sound and now I can see with the processing sound library I can now find different things. So if I go under configuration I will now start to see I processing library if I go to the sound file option I will see these are all of the options I have available to me to play with. I have play, I jump, pause, is playing. We will want to be using that. We want to find out if a sound is playing because if that sound is playing then we want to pause it and then we can use loop as a way to get the sound to loop continuously when we're asking it to play. So using the documentation is where we can find information on how to deploy certain aspects of the code. So it's not just something where we guess or we just make it up, but we actually have to go and read the documentation to get that information that we need to roll forward with it. The situation where we don't want the sound to play is when if vx is equal to zero and vy is equal equal to zero. So when Vx and Vy are zero, that is when we do not want the sound to play. But we can't tell a sound to stop or pause if the sound is already playing. So we have to do a check. We have to say if our sound effect walk is playing, sorry, there we go, is playing. So if sound effect walk is plain is equal to true then at that point we tell our sound effect walk to pause so if the sound is plain we tell it to pause because when the game starts out the player isn't moving so our VX and VY are indeed zero so if we tell it to pause, we can't tell it to pause if it's not playing because then it throws out an error message and gets grumpy with us, so we don't want to do that. So that's why we have to verify, is it playing first? If the sound is playing and then the player stops moving the sprite, it tells the sound effect to pause. But if VX and VY are not equal to zero, that the only other possible solution or situation is the player is walking. So then we want to tell it to play. But we only want to tell it to play if the walk Oh, forgot my parentheses. If the sound effect walk plane is false. So we only want to try to tell it to play when it's not playing once more. So this is overly redundant, but it prevents it from kicking out any error messages about, oh, the sound was playing or wasn't playing. Or, so we tell the sound then to loop. 
So by using loop instead of play, it doesn't keep starting the sound over. It just tells the sound, hey, go ahead and start looping while we go. So now, with this deployed, now figuring out when to use the is playing, the loops, the pause, all of that. Part of that comes from trial and error of just, hey, if I'm not moving, pause the music, otherwise tell it to go, and then it kicks out a new message. And that's why I discovered I had to actually put some of the Good start.